Hello everyone, this is Grass. Um, today, I will paint this subject, which is a red barn in Challenge Country in Washington, USA. Right? So if you notice, there are also um, apple tree that are in full blossom on the foreground and on the background. Right? So uh, what I did was uh, sketch this barn and the uh, trees on my sketch pad. And then once I'm happy with the lines that I made there, I sketch this in a miniature version using my Baohong uh, postcard size watercolor paper in block. Okay, so um, to reinforce the line, I have also used my accurate waterproof pen just to give emphasis that the barn and the foreground apple tree blossoms are the main subject of this uh, artwork okay after putting in the lines using the accurate pen i then added uh, masking fluid on uh, on the trees and some parts of the barn and the foreground to to uh for the highlights okay for the blossoms for the apple tree blossoms as well as some highlights that uh, that are present in the reference photo this is the source of my um, reference photo which is a photographic uh, journey book of washington okay so this uh, this book is by tom crickendall and Mitty spring uh, my mom gave this to me uh, on her return from her U.S. trip and I decided that I will keep this mainly as um, reference material for my future paintings and this is uh, my first uh, subject from this book so in the next um, video I will be I will I will show you how I I will add watercolor washes on this and then on the third phase of this demo I will add the details by removing the massive fluid and adding in the shadows and details of this artwork. Wish me luck! Um, hello, I'm, I'm back. So now uh, I forgot to take a video of the first wash. So basically what I did was combine um, light green by Mijello and yellow ochre by Daniel Smith to create this first wash of the background and the foreground so next I will be adding or I will add um, the, the dark green grass details or the mid-tone grass details by using sap green okay combination of sap green but I will just add this to the original or the first wash which is a combination of yellow yellow ochre and light green Okay, so just adding some sap green into this. Okay. And I will just uh, first add the foreground detail, just this. Just leaving some uh, some of the highlights or by just dragging or lifting off some of the colors just to indicate that those are some of the highlights left by or the ones where the light is hitting the grass okay so just do that here okay so this is the, the mid-tone mid-tone of the foreground Take note that some of the grasses are spilling, spilling out into the main. 
same pathway. Just like that. It's here. And then let's do the background, which is the slope right behind the red barn. Okay, if you notice, some of the colors are getting resisted or some of the uh, some sections of the slope are show color resist those are the parts where I added very thin layers of the masking fluid okay I'm also avoiding or trying to avoid the hot or the barn because this should be colored red rather than blue Okay, just lifting, lifting off this color that got into the barn, okay, that spilled over to the barn. But I'm not too worried about this because this is just the mid-tone. So, I will be covering, or I will cover these sections with darker colors anyway. So, that's fine. It's totally fine. Okay. And then next... Next, I will add the color of the, the barn. Okay, so for this, I'll I will use this color right here. The first layer will be thin. It's pyrrolene or pyrrolene maroon by Schmincke. Schmincke. Okay, so I'll just get the colors and heavily dilute with water first because this will be the first layer of the barn color. As you can see, I'm adding so many or so much water into this mix. So this is a um, tea consistency. And I will just let this color flow on this barn. Okay, so this is first layer. That's why this is so thin. So I decided to call, to to use this color instead of the irregular reds that come in palettes because uh, I have been one I have been uh, looking forward to trying out this color. I just ordered this from a fellow watercolor artist, and uh, as you can see, this is still very very light. Okay, because this is the first layer. Okay. I forget to also add the red color. Just take care of the spill. By dabbing it with a bit of tissue. There you go. So that's the first layer. So you can see it's still very, very light. And then I will do the foreground and the background by adding darker color of sapling and using a fun brush. If you're not familiar with fun brush, it's, it's uh, one of the brushes that I use for when I am painting grass details. Okay? But this time, I'll be using a stronger color of the sapling here. So, I will add more separate into the original wash or the first wash of the foreground and the background okay and then I will also add a bit of yellow ochre So I'm going to work on this very quickly because I need to add 
the shadow details of this foreground while while this grass detail still wet. So how do I do that? I will get a diluted, uh, rather a strong color here, and then just add here. Okay. So this detail of yeah. and then I will add blue into this mix of I will add some blue into this mix into this green mix to add um, darker version of the green which is again shadow so we just okay, let me just add more blue okay here I'm mixing it details to indicate that these ones are the shadow section okay since I'm not so satisfied with this um, detail I will try to brush it off using um, I, I'm going to uh, dry brush it using this fan by dabbing it on a piece of tissue to make it uh, to dry it a little bit and then just Fun it out like that. Okay. There you go. There you go. There's a bit of bloom here, but I'm not worried about that because I'm adding more colors into this section anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. But I do want to add green in this part because this is still part of the bush surrounding or rather at the foreground in front of the barn okay so I am extending that color onto the left side of the foreground okay and then I'm trying to soften it out by dabbing it with clean water okay just to just to emphasize that there's going to be some details here of the grass as well okay that's similar to this one but not necessarily exactly alike okay and I will just add the dark color that I did for here and apply it wet on wet on the bush right beside the barn right in front of the barn okay so again I'm adding blue okay this time I'm adding blue to this I'm using this this uh, French ultramarine by Daniel Smith that I have poured into this tiny palette if you're curious about this tiny resin palette I am going to put a link in the description box below for this so that uh, you know where you can get one especially if you're in the country Philippines where I am at at the moment okay so there you go I'm just reinforcing the shadow details of this grass at the foreground uh, I want as much details as I can add on this because these are on the foreground so therefore they would be the ones that will show more details in this painting okay so as you can see um, the colors are spreading because these are still this part of the grass are still wet okay so again I'm extending that here in order to show remind me how the grass should show on this left side all right so now I am going to add the same um, mix of sap green in the first wash here while these are still wet uh, but I'm going to use the 
fan brush. Okay, I'm using the fan brush in order to define the grassy section of the foreground here. Okay, so actually by using this brush, it helps remind me that there should be grass details here because this is the foreground. Okay. Okay, and then I will just add darker color of this mix by adding more sap grain into this and dabbing it out at the bottom section of the grassy patches here and I am allowing the colors to spill over onto the path just like in the reference photo I am adding the blue, the sap green and dark blue, French ultramarine blue mix for the shadow section of the, so I'm adding French ultramarine blue, okay, here, and adding it right at the bottom where the shadows are supposed to be, where the shadows are supposed to be, okay. So I'm just allowing the colors to spread here and then later I will okay and then later I will use the fan brush again dry brushing technique by wetting the brush and then dabbing it on the tissue and then using it in this motion to create that leafy texture that the blades of grass uses. Okay? Now, I'm not yet too happy with this because it doesn't have the required shadow. As I can see in the reference. So, I'm going to add neutral tint into this mix. The blue and the dark, uh, dark green mix or satin green mix. And then I'm going to while these are still wet, I'm going to add some sort of patchy shadows at the bottom of this grass sections, grassy sections of the foreground. Okay. So, okay, let's add some color into this. Okay. Because there will be sections here that are highlighted by the light but there will be sections that the grass patches are dark because they're they're thick at the base okay so that's what I'm doing trying to do right now show those details and then I'm just um, allowing the pointy the pointy end of my size 6 brush to spread the colors upwards in very thin like that thin um, blades okay Just um, add some details here. This is the bush right in front of the barn. Okay, and then let me just dab some color on the patch of grass right in front of the sliding door of the barn. Okay. landscape color the grassy section of the foreground or the background okay so you can notice huh? as in the reference photo there are press a uh, patch of green grassy areas at the slope here you go here so 
we're going to add the details on that. And if you noticed also, I am also coloring the sections where there are branches of these. The reason for this is that um, the apple tree blossoms have also patches of green on them just below the white blossoms. So that's why I'm adding the same color of the grass on these branches of the trees. And then we will lay, we will add uh, the dark section of the branches on top of these grassy, uh, rather green um, sepals of the apple blossoms. Okay, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm just adding the, the green color, the same grass green color that I used for the foreground. Okay, so if you notice, it's starting to look like something that you would see in Makoto Shinkai's artwork. Uh, I'm going to try to make it look like that because I want to uh, show that something like this need not to be too realistic. It can be something that you see or see observe in anime. Okay. So I have added a mid tone for the grassy slope behind the behind the red barn. Let's now add um, dark. Let's now add more sap green into the mix and then just swipe it across I'm just swiping it across this section okay there you go okay ultramarine blue okay for the shadow details of the for the shadow details of the background but I'm not going to uh, overkill it by adding too many shadows I will just um, add some sections just tiny patches of the shadows just like that just to indicate that there are sections that have um, thick grass okay And then um, here, I will add more of the mix on around the trees because um, if you notice, there will be sections of the uh, apple tree blossoms that have dark green patches. So that's what I'm trying to recreate here, okay? By adding the shadow, the shadow colors for the leaves, or rather the grass, okay? But in this lobe section, I'm just adding just fine lines. Of adding more on the tree sides okay so I'm using okay here okay okay so that I don't lose the highlights of the uh, the mid tones of the apple tree blossoms I have added light green mix around the masking fluids because the masking fluids represent the whitest part or the highlighted part of the apple tree blossom okay so this is just light green okay I'm really excited to see how this is going to look like because um, it's something that I've not done before straight out of a reference um, photography going to so now I'm going to color the barn maroon okay so I will use dark darker or milk consistency of the maroon color that I used previously so I'm adding more color into this so this is going to be the mid tone okay okay so we'll carefully add the colors on here Okay, so just uh, so this is rather thick so I don't 
I hope that it doesn't bleed. It doesn't bleed onto the background. That's the purpose also of um, adding. That's the purpose also of adding uh, masking fluids on sections that should be colored white. So that's the beauty of adding masking fluid prior to adding your washes okay so there you go okay so i've run out of color um okay let's just proceed to doing that adding more colors into this so this is the mid-tone of the barn okay part there will be sections that have green patches so I'm trying to avoid uh, those green patches because they're supposed to be part of the trees okay and if you notice I've already covered um, the section where there I observed a bloom earlier a green color bloom okay and then there you go. You notice there's also white patches on the barn itself I am going to cover those but I really don't want this to be uh, flat so there will be patches that are dark patches that are light colored as in the reference photo okay okay this still looks flat despite adding some texture on the barn the mid tone for the barn I'm now going to add some paints gray on this section the sandy section of the in right in front of the loan or at the loan right in front of the barn so this should be paints gray so I'm just grabbing my paints gray okay that's not my paints gray I'll just check this one okay this is paints gray from Daniel Smith so I'm adding just the first wash of the paint spray here. There you go. Okay. So if you notice, this doesn't have a texture just yet. Because I'm still doing the first wash for these uh, patches of or rather the, the sandy patch in front of the barn. So now, uh, wet on wet, I'm going to add more paint spray, but this I'm just at the bottom, just to indicate that there are shadowy sections on there. Okay, and then some green patch on the left side, as in the reference photo, to indicate that some of the grass have grown on top of the sandy pile here. Just like in the picture, so I'm trying to uh, duplicate this one, where you have this uh, sand, uh, sandy uh, patch, and then you have probably this is an old uh, sand uh, material where the grass have already encroached. Okay, so I'm going to add the green, green section at the top, or green paint at the top of the sandy patch here, and then I'm also going to lift out some colors. For highlights okay so how do I do that I just dab my brush I just wash it off dab it dry and then I'm going to just literally leap off the color while these are still these colors are still slightly wet see so that's how I do it usually and then since I'm not yet satisfied with the shadow part I'm going to add more base gray at the bottom and applying it wet on wet see transition so now I am going to soften this section because it's this too okay now I'm going to add some paints gray into the K 
Okay, um, I think I'm going to add some, well, not paint gray, but rather um, French ultramarine blue just to darken the maroon color for the barn. So see, this is a beautiful maroon with blue undertone or blue mix. Okay, and I am going to add this to the shadowed section of the barn here. Okay. Just to indicate that there will be shadow right underneath that part of the barn. And then here. Okay, I'm doing this so that I don't forget the shadows. Sometimes I tend to um, forget some of the shadows that should be there. Okay. And then I'm just going to drag it downwards just like that. Okay, see, I'm dragging the colors down. Here. Okay. And if you notice that the shadow isn't as dark as it should be, but not to worry because I am going to add more color into this later on. Probably I'm going to use uh, paint gray. Add paint gray into the mix. Okay. Okay. Here. There you go. So I'm going to add paint gray into mix it's the same mix, mix I use but I'm gonna I'm gonna let this dry first so adding um, maroon and paints gray and then blue here so this is now a darker uh, version of the color just let me just add more paints gray into this and then more maroon because this is looking too black for me um, and then uh, I am going to, but I'm going to have to, since this is still wet, I'm going to add the color of the, the patch of road in front of the, in front of the barn, okay? So this is just heavily diluted paint gray, okay? Thin, very thinly diluted paint gray, okay? So it's looking flat, so I'm gonna add I'm gonna add some more gray into this and some um, burnt shena. Okay, so diluted burnt shena. Okay, and just add this uh, here, wet on wet, just like that. And then darker burnt shena in combination of burnt shena and paint gray so it's um, okay and then I will just add it uh, here very thinly here okay here also because this is the part where you have the grassy like the grassy patch the foreground and I am just adding this here just to indicate that the road is slightly um, or the level of the road is lower than the grassy patch. It's not in the it's not in the reference photo. So you can see in the reference photo, it's actually rather flat. But I want it to look like uh, the grassy patch is a little elevated compared to the road. And then I will just um, I will just drag the color down down to the center just to soften just to soften the colors. Right, so here we go. And I will just add more uh, paint gray. Okay, here. Here. I'm just adding paint gray here. Here. Okay. Okay. Just to show that this is the dominant color of the the road. paints gray here and uh, more paints gray here as well there you go. and then I will just add some paints gray try brush some paints gray okay here to add more shadows on the sections so there should be shadows okay so this is just paints gray and I am adding on the shadowed section of the grassy patches okay, okay. I'm 
dry your brush and get here. Let's go to adding the second layer of the shadow on the barn. Okay, so this should be this part right here. Okay, all right. So maybe I should use a thinner um, brush, but let me just try it with my size six brush. I'm a little. Uh, <laughs> okay, so here as well. Okay, so this is the inside of the barn. Slightly, the, the drawer is slightly ajar to the left. Okay. And then here, there should be also... There should be... Shadows here also. Okay. And then, right here. going to drag some of the colors down. Okay, just going to drag some of the colors down. It seems that the shadow is still not enough to make this um, dimensional or rather uh, to make this appear less flat. So I am going to spread the colors down. And we'll add more paints gray to the mix. So see, I'm still experimenting here. Um, some of you guys who are who have been painting a while probably knows that I am experimenting. You can tell that I'm experimenting with my colors right now. Here we go. Just adding these colors right here so that it doesn't. Uh... Okay. So this is still looking flat. But way better than before. Okay, let me just add some colors here. Okay. I'm just getting this color spread naturally just to add some texture onto this. let this look a little lighter at the bottom there you go. just to add some character into this barn and then I will just add uh, paint spray here okay so as you can see it's more effective if I use just paint gray here and allowing the colors to spread down here. So this is wet on wet. Okay. And then I will also add some shadows here as well. And here as well. And here. So I'll just grab some more paints gray. Okay. Alright. There you go. And then here of course the inner inner Inside um, the barn is dark, right? And then here as well. Okay. And then I will grab some more paint spray and allow just add some textures on the line. Here we go. Just to indicate that. The barn is made up of planks of wood. Okay, this one right here is darkened also. The section. Alright. There you go. As you can see, I'm not uh, adding the lines continuously. Just a very discreet uh, lines. And then I'm just adding some more here because this looks weak. Here as well. And then here. Oh. 
almost forgot that there should be shadow part here as well. Okay. And here. Right. And then let me just see what else did I miss. sections here I'm just adding lines, very thin lines, using the same mix of paints gray, just to uh, add some shadow lines on this dirt road, right? Okay, and these are looking flat, so I'm gonna add some burnt sienna into paints gray. very thinly add some squiggly line just to indicate that this one right here are okay it just doesn't look okay, this doesn't look organic so let me just fix that by softening the lines hope you can still see that okay i'm just adding water and softening the lines okay so this is dry brushing already So I'm just letting it dry first because uh, this is still wet. I'll be back in a bit. So I almost forgot that I also have uh, wooden planks here. And I also um, forgot to add um, the trunks. But I'm thinking it, I should add this later. After I've already removed the, the mask. But that, it, okay, I'll just add it right now. So for the, for the trunk... I'm just going to use paint spray and burnt sienna. For the first layer, I'm also thinking if I should use sepia because in the reference photo, it actually looks rather dark. Yeah, maybe I should just use um, paint gray added to burnt sienna. Okay, here. So this is already dark brown. And then just add it here okay just to indicate so the, the the masking fluid is helping with um, with this one as well okay at least now I am able to um, draw the trunks here trying to make this as organic as possible by making it uh, look like squiggly lines here but some of the sections are getting resisted or the fluid mass uh, the mass fluid is resisting some of the colors which is fine I think I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out actually when I started this project I have no idea how this is going to turn out I just know that I'm going to try to paint this barn because it, it has character which I like I like a lot okay so we're done with the first tree now let's proceed to the second tree in this um, tree the, the main trunk is hidden from view but the small branches are obvious on the left side okay hope you can see that so let me just add some rogue um, branch here as well. Okay. And then I will also add this um, very thinly. These are the apple trees at the bot at the background, at the sloping background behind the uh, behind the uh, red barn. Okay. 
Okay? So now, we're done with the tree, or at least the trunks and the branches. I'm just going to darken some of this by adding more paints gray. Okay, so it's almost black. The mix is almost black. I'm just going to add those on the left side of the trunk. Okay, left side of the tree. And this is done wet on wet. Okay, so as you can see, these colors are still resist. Some of the parts are still resisting the colors because of the masking fluid. Here, and then right at the bottom here. Just to indicate that the, the light is coming from overhead here as well. There you go. Okay. I'm just adding some character into this tree by adding the shadow sections. Okay. And then right here you have this tiny branches from the left side tree. Or the tree from the left side. I'm going to leave this as is because um, those are just um, the background and I'm not going to focus on those um, trees behind the barn, the sloping section. I am now going to proceed to Okay, okay, so uh, I'm going to use a diluted paints gray for the planks of wood that are keeping, uh, that are right beside the trees. So I don't know what's the purpose of these. I honestly don't know what's the purpose of these planks of wood. It's probably to keep the the tree from toppling over. I don't know. Maybe it's to uh, to help the tree uh, stable because uh, it's blossoming. So it means that gonna have it's gonna have some fruits and it's going to be heavy with fruit soon so that's the that's probably the purpose of this plant to wood I honestly know because I'm not a farmer I've not been to the US but it's nice to add this as well because this is part of the okay there you go okay and then let me just uh, Remove some highlights on these planks of wood because some of the light is heating these planks of wood as well. Then we just add some shadows at the bottom here, just like that. Okay, and then here as well, I'm going to add some paint spray. Right at the shadows are uh, some of these are shadows being cast by the branches of the apple tree okay so this is just paints gray right okay some of the shadows being cast by the tree there you go and then I will just add some here So right now, I forgot this. <laughs> this part there should be there should be green part, light green part here. So I'm just gonna add light green here. Okay, here as well. Okay, lest I forget. Here you go. There you go. And then here, I'm just going to add some here as well. I want 
want to add some yellow ochre on some parts here just to indicate that there are just to uh, just add some drama so there are um, much like you know when 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 the light heats the blades of grass and you have sections of the grass that are already yellowing okay just to make this a little more organic here. and I'm adding those colors here okay and then just as an added uh, measure I am going to cover this part here and add some spatters okay some green spatters and just fix those some of the green spatters here and then um, burnt sienna mix with to dry allow this to dry first before removing the the masking fluid using my natural rubber which is this one okay and let me see I think this is already dry so I'm going to remove the masking fluid here This, these areas where it's totally dry, not here yet because um, the colors here are still wet. Okay, so there you go. So those are my apple blossoms. Okay. So I like using the natural rubber for removing the masking fluids because um, um, when I use my hand for this, it's, uh, sometimes I get color in my palms and I tend to smudge the whitest part of the paper so I don't like that to happen again. That's why uh, I, bought, I bought my natural rubber for this purpose. Okay, so you can see it doesn't, uh, by, using this, um, by using this rubber, Natural rubber, I'm able to remove the massing fluid without destroying the paper underneath. So that's the advantage of using this natural rubber. Okay. So I just okay, I'm not sure if I've already removed everything. Let me check. 
on the trees so I will remove the ones on the on the barn okay okay here as well and here as well So now that I have removed these um, the sections, I will just um, grab some of the colors so it doesn't look too um, too light here. just beside or underneath the whites so I'm gonna do just that, do just that. so I'm just gonna add some green okay green onto this there you go. not e not everything I'm not gonna cover everything just some of the sections of the white of the white add some texture so this is just a combination of sap green and yellow ochre I'm gonna add the shadows later for the blossoms okay so I'm just dabbing colors on the white patches like so stronger color okay, so just I'm just dabbing the colors by the way I'm not I'm not um, this is very random I'm not trying to add some textures that are of distinct shapes I'm just dabbing the colors just to make it uh, just to add the mid tones so the white here is the highlights of the apple blossoms. The, the color green that I'm dabbing now is light version of the shadow, which are the mid tones. Okay, so the, I'm just adding the mid tones right now by dabbing in the colors onto the white patches randomly. Okay. And then I'm almost done. So now I am going to add the shadow 
of the blossom. How do I do that? I just I just get a stronger color of the sap green. Okay? And I'm going to add that just below the mid-tones that I added previously. Right? So just like that. Again, this is also random but uh, I try to put the sap green just besides or underneath the mid-tone green that I added just previously okay so I have not been to the US so I don't know really how how the apple blo blossoms look in real life it's nice to paint something that I'm not familiar with simply by using the reference photos that I have right now. I'm pretty sure some of you guys have a better idea of doing this because probably you've seen uh, three apple blossoms, I mean apple blossoms in real life. If you have any uh, suggestion on how I go about this, you are free, welcome to, to do that in the comment section. Okay, I'm pretty sure some of you have already done this. All welcomes and suggestions. Uh, also, suggestions and uh, recommendations are welcome in this page. Okay. So let me just do that also here. Okay. So let's just assume that these are uh, flowers that have fallen, that have fallen to the ground. Okay. Because that also that can happen as well. And then I'm um, just adding shadows also on the side okay Uh, if you have wash, white wash, um, you can add uh, wash on some of the foregra background trees, okay? which is what I'm doing right now. Because there would be, actually there's a quicker way to do this, by spattering as well. So do that in a bit okay so I'm gonna cover the sections when I want to add the spatter so I am okay so this again this is gouache right so this is just a thicker version of watercolor it's more opaque I also like using gouache for my artworks just like today 
I think I'm going to use another brush because um, my <coughs> silver black velvet is too soft for this purpose. So I'm gonna use um, I'm gonna use a synthetic brush for this. Thinner. Okay, so I'm going to use synthetic brush to add to add gouache, which only uh, which uh, represents the smaller apple blossoms not yet in full bloom okay so let me just do that okay so i'm not sure if i'm doing this here here we go okay so as you can see i needed to add some uh, So I'm actually almost done and I hope that um, you've enjoyed this tutorial and this is a little um, uh, takes about one hour to finish this project but I actually enjoy actually enjoy doing this now adding the spatter which represents the tiniest um, apple blossoms especially the ones at the background the trees behind the um, red barn here just um, add some bigger or medium sized um, blossoms here. So I'm just doing that by just uh, dabbing the color, the gouache color, around the trunks of the trees and branches. I'm also trying to avoid the white patches because I want those to be pure white. just gonna add some white highlights on the grass okay there you go and then right here as well artwork it's almost done in this artwork the, the white gouache represents uh, the, the the white blossoms at the farther farther away from farther away from view so I'm adding this in order to uh, to make the trees look three-dimensional because I, if I don't do that this will look or render um, flat so this is actually the, the finishing touches for this project um, but I'm actually almost done right so the next step really is to the next step is to add more tiny branches using paint gray and a bit of 
and a bit of red sienna. signature here. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you in my next videos. Bye for now.